Hi, I'm Andrew Watson. Thanks for tuning in once again to my weekly guitar blog. It is Sunday, November 27th, 2011. This time around, we're going to go all the way to Germany to Gus. He wrote in saying, one problem I'm having when studying scales is that I don't fully understand how to apply them, especially exotic scales. So could you go through how a guitarist should approach this? Maybe run through a scale for me. I'm studying now. It's the Egyptian scale. Thanks, Andrew, from Gus in Germany. Well, thanks for writing in, Gus. You know, the idea of practicing new scales, whether they're exotic or not, has a lot to do with having a good approach. So let's zoom in on the neck right away and go through a three-step process I like to use to help my own students get a grip on learning and eventually applying any new type of scale. When you start working on any new scale, the first thing to do is make a study of the notes and understand fully which tones are found within the scale, understand the scale degree layouts, uh, look to see on that third interval to determine whether or not it's a major third or a minor third. That will determine the color of your scale. In the case of the Egyptian scale, which is what Gus said he was studying, uh, that scale actually happens to have um, an E flat. So the scale automatically with that minor third, it makes the color of the scale minor. So let's just focus on this Egyptian scale idea. We'll start off on the C and we'll just climb through that scale. I'll tell you what the notes are. It starts on C. I'm on the eighth fret of sixth string here. Gonna move up to D at 10th fret. I'm gonna grab 6th fret E flat. We're also gonna have an F sharp. It's a bit of a stretch up at 9th fret. And then we'll have a G natural on 10th fret. Then we're gonna move over to the 4th string. We'll have 6th fret A flat reaching up here to a B at the 9th fret on the 4th string. And then finally resolving on the octave at the 10th fret of 4th string. So the notes again are C, D, E flat, F sharp, G, A flat, B, C. Now, of course, you want to take it to the next octave as well. And then after that, of course, make a thorough study of it all along the span of your entire fingerboard. Do every location, get to know that scale. There's one big friendly scale across the whole neck. Now, once you have that down, the next step with things is to take the scale and build it into triad chords. Uh, we're gonna go down to the third fret of the fifth string. Um, our first chord in the Egyptian scales, harmony layout. We're gonna build chords, in other words, with every step of the scale. Uh, to do that, you just stack every second note. So the C goes to E flat, and then to, uh, we have C, E flat, and G. That forms the scale or arpeggio for the first step. Now the second step is, however, is a little bit different. Um, this is a major chord that has a flat five. Now the third step is E augmented. You can do it, there's a challenging shape here, or you could do it as an easier shape this way. The next shape uh, isn't too bad. It's up at F sharp. It's a rather strange chord, however. It's F sharp, uh, suspended second flat five, a different one. And then we move to the 10th position for a G, 11th position for an A flat. Those are both majors. And we're just gonna drift down to the second position, B minor, to take us back to the C again. So there's some pretty unique chords that are found in the Egyptian scale. And once you get them down, you get some fingerings together, the next step, the third phase of this, is to start building chord progressions so that you can record them and begin playing the scale under the chord progression. Now I came up with something here, uh, going from the uh, root of C up over to the E flat augmented, and then over to that uh, G, sorry, D major with a flat five, and then we're gonna head over to A flat, taking it to G. And it's just a four uh, bar progression and the rhythm I established for it sounded like this. Two, three, four. So you could record that and then just apply the scale, start getting a sense of phrasing, find your licks, your runs, the interesting geometrical shapes that you like to uh, perform through the scale shape to come up with your runs and so forth. And then in no time, you'll be actually applying and using the scale and you'll have some mobility and some sense of awareness along the neck with it if you follow these steps. So as you can see, the method here begins with that of pattern recognition. So practice the living daylights out of your scale shapes all over your neck in all keys. Now, as well, speaking of recognition, um, there's that word again. It's really important that you recognize the scales 
own unique harmony because the chords that come from the scale you're studying ultimately mean pretty much everything in terms of where you'll use that scale in the end. And uh, last but certainly not least, there's the creation of short chord progressions that you can jam out on from those harmonies of the scale. You just wanna work on them over and over again to attain your licks, lines, runs, musical statements, and ideas, so that down the road, the scale is very well ingrained and very easy to create melodies with. Anyway, once again, that's about all the time I have for today. So as always, I hope these explanations have helped you. Thanks for watching, have yourself a great week, and I'll catch up with you next time. Bye for now.